Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Premier Cricket TV. My name is Megan Hustwaite. It is very exciting to be here. For the next seven weeks, we will be shining a spotlight on the fabulous competition, which is Kookaburra Victorian Premier Cricket. We'll have all the big name guests, all the highlights, and we'll be putting a lens to the upcoming finals series. Well, joining me at the desk for episode one is the general manager of Victorian Premier Cricket and also also a former Premier Cricketer himself. Welcome, Liam Murphy. Thank you, Megan. Great to be here. How great is it for Premier Cricket to have its own TV show? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's um, it's, it's brilliant to be able to shine a spotlight on, on the competition itself and, and the great players, um, both men and women, that are that are performing week in, week out over the summer in the Premier Cricket competition. And it's, and it's obviously now in a position where we've got the technology to make it happen and we're really keen to push that. It's going to be fantastic for the next seven weeks, as I said, leading into finals. But to this point, it's been a terrific campaign across women's and men's competitions. How have you seen the standard? Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the standard is exceptional and that can be seen through um, the engagement of the Premier Cricket Competition players through the, um, the representative uh, competitions that are happening at the moment, be it second 11 for the men and the WNCL, as well as BBL and WBBL competitions. It's been great to have good, solid Solid representation and I think that shows the quality and calibre of our players. And your first season too in the role, it is a new role, how are you finding and enjoying it? Yeah look it's been wonderful, as, as you said before I, I am a Premier Cricketer so I'm, I'm extremely passionate about the space and um, thoroughly enjoy um, being involved in having an influence over the competition and how it's run. Uh, I must admit um, you know it's been a really uh, strong baptism of fire with, with yeah. what's gone on with Covid and the like so um, that's been pretty interesting to manage but we've been able to get there and it's great to be into a, heading into a final series. Well, highlights are plenty to come on Premier Cricket TV. Let's start by taking a look at the weekend's action. It was hard to condense all of the highlights, That's Liam, right. into this package, but let's take a look at some of the action. Michael Hill has been a star in this competition for a long time. Absolutely, and obviously we've got there uh, a wicket there by Jake Reid coming out with a really fast Yorker, not um, uncommon for him. And, uh, and a great outcome, uh, first 11 debut uh, for Matty, uh, Matilda Pendergrass to get that wicket and a five wicket haul. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been a, it was an eventful weekend for, for the game and especially there was a, a, an extraordinary game between uh, Essendon and Dandenong, uh, Essendon and Marby, Marby Park and Dandenong in the, in the uh, women's first grade there it was a, quite a tussle um, and a low scoring <laughs> of affair with a 52 to 56 result. It was incredible. When you look at those games over my cricket or on the um, frog box over the weekend, you wonder whether that's right yes. sometimes yeah. because it's yeah. so hard to believe. But uh, we're going to talk a bit more about that game with a special guest a bit later on. But let's take a look at the ladders now for the women's and men's competitions. We're going to start with the women's ladder. Of course, coming into the final round this weekend, we've got Melbourne at the top, Carlton in second place, Dandenong and EMP, Box Hill, Ringwood, Paran and Plenty Valley. We're going to look at the games coming up in the final round a little bit later. But Liam, there's plenty on the line this weekend for final spots. Yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge weekend for, for the women's game in that respect. Obviously, as we get closer to the end, all games count. And in this case, we're very tight from three to six. Uh, on the ladder positions and there's some huge games between Box Hill, EMP and, and Ringwood and Carlton to really shape the um, the final series. Yeah, it's all on the line this week as we take a look at the Premier Men's Ladder. We are heading into round 14, so three games to play and it's the, the Saints at the top of the ladder after having their first loss of yeah. the season to Richmond last week. Carlton up there, Melbourne, Richmond who are on a bit of a roll at the moment, Casey South Melbourne, the Dogs, the Bombers, Geelong, Melbourne Uni, Paran and then Ringwood. So we've got a couple of sides pushing for spots in the final eight. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, another tight um, tussle between, uh, you know, sixth to tenth on the ladder there. There's plenty to play for going into the last three rounds of the season. There's so many storylines too. We mentioned Richmond. They knocked off, knocked off St Kilda at the weekend, but they are rolling and they've become a bit of giant killers. In, yeah, in the they're, they're very even. They're a very even team. And, and as you say, they've got some really talented cricketers um, in their group, both with bat and ball. And I 
think um, their explosive nature really is hard to contain at times um, and it's been seen in, in the recent competitions. Yeah, there's so much action happening at the moment. We're looking forward to it this weekend. We're looking forward to the upcoming episodes of Premier Cricket TV. Liam, thank you so much for joining us at the desk on episode one. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Time to take a look now at the Victorian Premier Cricket match of the round, thanks to Kukavara. Time to welcome our first player guest on Premier Cricket TV and we go straight to the top. He is the captain coach of the Carlton Cricket Club. Welcome, Evan Golvis. Hi. Well, you've been involved in Premier Cricket for a long time, Ev. How great is it, first of all, to have Premier Cricket TV and this spotlight on the competition? Oh, look, it's fantastic. Anything that we can do to try and promote um, the competition um, and all the players doing really well in it to try and get higher honours, I think is fantastic. Now, let's talk about the Blues. We'll start with you. What's it been like flying in and out from Tassie into Melbourne to play each weekend? Take us through that. Um, oh, look, it's, uh, it's pretty full on at times, but um, when you're used to playing state cricket, it's not much different. So I sort of look at it that way. Um, I'm born and bred in Melbourne, but obviously live in Tasmania. So I get to see friends and family when I'm in Melbourne. Um, it's a little bit tricky getting away from... Uh, the babies and, and life in, in Launceston. But, um, yeah, look, it's really enjoyable. I, I stay with Dad when I'm in Melbourne, so it's a great opportunity to see him as well. And obviously the Carlton Cricket Club's really close to my heart, so I get to spend lots of time uh, with, the, with the Cricket Club. How do you stay connected with the Blues when you are in Tassie during the week? Oh, look, we've got a fantastic group of coaches uh, around me which allow me to be in and out um, and also... As you will find, I tend to speak a lot. So actually hearing some other voices rather than just myself um, is probably a good thing for our group. Um, otherwise, it'd probably get sick of me pretty quickly. Well, let's have a look at the match of the round highlights now. It was Geelong and Paran. It was a cracker and there was lots of runs to be had in this game, Ev. And both teams featured some players that are making a lot of big scores this season. We'll start with Hayden Butterworth, the first cat to score four tonnes in one season. He's uh, on the way to scoring five and you're one of a few players that's uh, made 100, uh, five hundreds in one season. He's in some good form. Yeah, look, he's, uh, he's a remarkable player, um, going really well. Um, and yeah, I suppose he's the big wicket when we've got Geelong, we've got them coming up. So um, hopefully we can get him nice and early, uh, obviously in good form. But there's there's plenty of other guys in that list, um, along with Tommy Jackson coming back as well. Um, he's starting to hit, him, hit his straps and, and got 40-odd on the weekend. So hopefully we can get a few of those big guys out early. So Butterworth, 117, Josh McDonald, 55 not out, and Tommy Jackson, as you mentioned, great to see him back out there with 49. For Paran, though, they had a few big scorers. Blake with 96, Damon Egan was unbeaten on 80, and Lockie Bangs on 40. What have you made of the two Blues so far? Oh, look, we had them uh, recently, and uh, I thought they're, they're playing pretty good cricket. Um, they've obviously um, started the season a little bit slow for their standards. Um, they're playing pretty good cricket, uh, and to get the job done on the weekend keeps them in the hunt. So, look, they're, they're going to be a team that no one will want to play in the finals um, if they get there. So, uh, they're a dangerous side. They've got some um, really good batters that can hit the ball hard uh, and some decent bowling, obviously, being the Premiers last year. They're... They should be high of confidence of, of their games. So, look, yeah, as I said, you wouldn't want to wouldn't want to come up against them if they finish eighth and you're the fifth ranked team or anything like that. Um, because they're pretty dangerous. Let's take a look now at our player of the round. He is a leggy from Casey South Melbourne, and he is making big waves at the moment. Ruantha Kalipotha, five for twenty five, stunning figures. Ev, you haven't played Casey this season, but uh, have you seen or heard much of this star? No, not at all. Um, the only thing that I do know is, uh, so Xavier Crone captained him in one of the um, Futures games um, or second 11 games, and he said he, he, he was the real deal. So, uh, look, he's a, he's a good judge of a cricketer. So having a fantastic year, uh, creating a few opportunities for himself, obviously got um, high skill level. 
and we know spinners in white ball cricket are really important. So, look, uh, we, we don't have them this season, but um, hopefully when we come up against the finals, uh, or if we come up against them in the finals, then we can um, we can sort of counter him and and maybe score off everyone else. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't had a look in yet. Well, let's talk about finals because Carlton have already won a title this season. It was the Super Slam final against St Kilda last month. How great was that for the Blues to um, to get that title and how important was the experience for some of your younger players? Oh, look, it's always fantastic to come away with the silverware when you, when you get to that. Um, over the last probably 15 years, we've created a lot of opportunities for ourselves as a club um, and it's only been the last probably five that we've started to take them. Um, obviously, in the T20 space, we've been... Um, been a bit of a force in the in the Victorian setup for a while now, and obviously playing in Adelaide and winning that title the, the first year of that as well. So, look, I think we're a pretty good T20 team, um, and you know, to play St Kilda this year, which we didn't get an opportunity to, uh, with round one being washed out, um, gave us a great chance to to see what they're like as well. So, look, it was a fantastic game. Um, really hard fought win um, and we had to play our best cricket so I, I think that holds us in good stead for the rest of the season as well. Well Carlton are a pretty good T20 team you're a pretty good T20 player tell us about the 16 hours uh, that included that Carlton title and what came uh, a few hours after that. Oh look uh, when you when you get an opportunity to play uh, in finals uh, you, you, you take them, I think. So obviously played um, played when was it Tuesday night in Victoria in that final, and then caught the first flight out in the morning to uh, to Hobart to play for the um, the Greater Northern Raiders, and were able to get the chocolates there as well. So look, it was a it was a pretty big oh, sixteen hours or twenty four hours if you include a little bit of celebration <laughs> on the way back. Um, still had the two and a half hour bus drive on the way home as well. So uh, look, a bit of travel, but used to that. But it was more um, a great opportunity and such a young group um, with the Raiders as well. They're a bit of a um, oh, a new team in the in the system. Um, it's only their fourth year, and to, and to win a title in the Hobart competition is pretty pretty awesome. Well, two T20 titles in 16 hours, it's something probably only you can achieve. But let's look ahead to this weekend. And uh, Carlton have got Geelong. So you're in second place at the moment, Geelong in ninth. What are you expecting in, in this contest on Saturday? Oh, well, looking at the numbers, you'd say it's a bit of a run fest. Um, Geelong's batting lineups got some good depth. Um, and obviously with a couple of decent bowlers at the top as well. Uh, look, I think we're going along really well. Um, probably had our top four all miss out last game, so hopefully um, they get back in the runs. Uh, but as a bowling unit, I think we've been fantastic. So can't knock where we're at at the moment. Um, we've got three rounds to, and three really good sides to play um, with Geelong, Footscray and Richmond, who are all going pretty well and, and, and have got a lot to play for, whether they're trying to finish top four or, or make sure they're, they're getting a finals berth with Geelong. So... Um, you know, everyone's bringing their best against us at the moment, so it's going to hold us in good stead. Fascinating run home for the Blues. Evan Gobbis, thank you for joining us and for being our very first guest on Premier Cricket TV. No worries at all. Anytime. Great to catch up with Evan Golbus, captain coach of the Carlton Cricket Club and from one premier start to another, joining us at the desk on episode one from the Dandenong Cricket Club is Emma Gallagher. Welcome, Gags. Thanks very much. Great to be here, Megan. And I'm not sure about star, but we'll do our best. Let's see how we go. <laughs> you are a premier star, but you're also a budding broadcaster. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I was fortunate enough to be involved in the um, Change Our Game Making the Call program, which you yourself uh, came and spoke to a, a group of very thankful um, budding broadcasters and since then have had the opportunity to commentate on a WNCL match, which was an awesome experience with some very supportive people around me, including uh, former teammate Sarah Elliott as well, which made for a bit more comfortable environment and a few more games coming up as well. So really exciting and it's, yeah, it's been a great opportunity that I'm very thankful for and, and excited about. And you also spent um, a test with the Channel 7 
cricket broadcast team. How was that experience? Yeah, that was awesome. A late call up thanks to our friend COVID with a few staff going down. So just spent some time with the production team in the, in the studios in South Melbourne for the Sydney test, which was, yeah, just extraordinary. An awesome bunch of people, again, who, who were so generous in, in sharing their insights and knowledge. And um, yeah, just awesome to get a bit of a behind the scenes view, a bit, a bit like what I'm getting here today, actually, maybe on a slightly small scale. Well, we love having you here for episode one. We are going to crack into the top performers of the round now. And we start with another Premier Cricket great, Brett Forsyth from Dandenong, 84 off 136 for Brett. He is a champion of your club. He certainly is, and a great bloke to boot. So, yeah, really great to see him back in the runs. Caelan Green from Carlton, 5 for 40 uh, from 10 against Paran and an upcoming star of this competition. Don't mind that catch there. Very handy. <laughs> Nick Blaise from Paran, uh, 94 from 96 against Geelong at the weekend, which was fabulous. Let's get another Danny Nong player in. Please. Kimmy G, Kim Garth in uh, a cracking game against AMP. Four for 10 from 8.5 overs. Also getting a Guernsey, Nick Taranto from Frankston Peninsula, 93 not out against Ringwood. And Zoe Griffiths, the Box Hill star against Melbourne, 79 not out and two for 12. That's a big day. And Barbie Defshand from Ringwood, 77 and two for 22 against Plenty Valley. Some stars of the comp in there. Absolutely. I don't know though if there's no frog box, did it really happen? I'm, I'm not, not convinced on that one. <laughs> Let's have a look at our top knocks. From the weekend, we mentioned Hayden Butterworth a bit earlier, 117 from 141 against the True Blues. His fourth century for the season. He is having an outstanding summer at the top of the order for Geelong. Also, Josh Trembath, Green Val Kangaroos uh, against Essendon, 109 from 126, his second century of the season. He's putting his name up there as well as we move into our top wicket takers for the men's competition, Dom Matarazzo. His name's been amongst the wickets this season. 25 for him. Matty Wilson from Dandenong, 25. And Liam Bowe from the Bombers as well. We talked about Ruantha Kalipotha a bit earlier from Casey making waves with its leg spin. 23 wickets. 23 for Jade Christensen from Kingston Hawthorne. John McGlinchey from the Cats also on 23. So a good spread of clubs there as we take a look at the top wicket takers for the women's competition. At the top of the leaderboard from Box Hill is Isabel White with 25. Hazrat Gill from the Demons with 23. Madison Elbers from the Blues has 22 wickets. Hayley Ferris from the Rams has 20. And we'll take a look now at the top runs across the competition. And Tom Rogers, hasn't he been one of the big names and big performers this season from the Rams? 794 runs, followed by Hayden Butterworth from the Cats, 706. Harrison Smythe, 641. Jack Harper from the Days, 604. And then we've got a couple from Northcote with Mark Phelan on 587. Gags, let's take a look at the top run scorers for the women's. Barbie, as we mentioned, 5.25. Amy Vine, always a star down at the Albert Ground, 4.78. Sophie Reid from the Blues having another great summer with 476 runs. Una Raymond Hoey from the Rams, 4.52. And Kaylin Green gets another mention. She's got 391 runs so far this summer. There's some, uh, some big run scorers in there, isn't there? It's been great to see a few centuries, particularly in the, in the women's competition and, and some um, players there who maybe struggled a little bit early. Uh, Barbie in particular, mm -hmm. seeing her back in the runs has, has been really great and I'm sure Ringwood will be happy to see that. I love that from Ringwood in the top 10 run scorers for the comp, we've got three players. Yeah. And then in the men's from Northcote, we've got um, two Northcote players. So it's good to see that representation. Absolutely, yeah, for yeah. sure. And for Carlton as well in the women, I think great to see them. Um, obviously, they've made that move to be purely a Carlton team, to see them have uh, two players in that top um, sort of four or five was uh, is great for them. Before we let you go, Gags, we need to talk about the incredible match that was uh, <laughs> Dan and Ong EMV at the weekend. Take us through yeah. it. Uh, yep. Numbers that you have to see to believe. That was extraordinary, wasn't it? Um, look, anytime Kim Garth is 
bowling full and straight, things can happen. And uh, she's done it before against the MP in, in a, a T20 final. Um, so we're pretty excited when we saw a few wickets going down early. But look, she was uh, in particular was warning us that it was going to be a tricky pitch to to bat on, and and so it, so it ended up being. I'm not sure that it was tricky enough to warrant uh, what was it five for seven and six for ten. <laughs> um, but uh, hey, that's that's cricket, and that's what we love about it. Anything can happen. Coming into the final round, what's the status quo for Dan in this weekend? Uh, the status quo is we'll make it as difficult as possible for ourselves, and then get across the line. I think uh, <laughs> my, my teammate Sophie Strickland likes to say that we've got a cert for and a comeback. Um, <laughs> um, and on the weekend, she was saying that perhaps we've also got a, a cert for in stuffing it up. But um, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll see how we go. It should be a great contest it always is against Melbourne and yeah. really looking forward to it. We are looking forward to it. Well Emma thanks so much for joining us on the show. We know you will be back not only <laughs> a star of the competition but as up and coming broadcast star as well. So thank you. Good luck to Danny Nong this weekend. Thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Great to see you. Okay let's take a look now at the spotlight for the upcoming rounds in Kookaburra Premier Cricket women's and men's action. It is the final round in the women. Round 14 in the men. So let's take a look at the men's. First of all, Peran and St Kilda. Very much looking forward to that contest. Peran need to keep winning. Danny Nong, Fitzroy, Doncaster, Carlton and Geelong will be a cracker. We spoke to Evan Golbus a little earlier about that one. Melbourne and Ringwood, Camberwell and Melbourne Uni, another important one. Richmond and Essendon. Richmond are the giant killers at the moment. Essendon into the eight. And Footscray and Greenvale, Kingston and Haw Kingston Hawthorne and Frankston to round out round 14. As we take a look at the final round of the women's home and away season, we've got Plenty Valley and Paran Melbourne and Dandenong is going to be a cracker at the Albert Ground. Box Hill and Essendon Maribyrnong Park, the winner can make finals. And then Carlton and Ringwood, if Ringwood beat Carlton and Dandenong lose Ringwood, play finals. So um, a lot to come in an action pack final round of the women's competition. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the very first episode of Premier Cricket TV. We will be back this time next Wednesday. More big guests, all the highlights and plenty of Premier Cricket chat. See you then.